They call this America's loneliest highway, but is it really? Today I'm taking you across Highway 50 to find out what makes it so hauntingly quiet. I've been living out of this old truck camper in my Toyota Tundra chasing stories hidden in the American West. And Highway 50, it's a road with a reputation, but is it just marketing? Once a critical stagecoach route and Pony Express route in the 1860s, this stretch through Nevada is known for its eerie silence, breathtaking isolation, and ghost towns frozen in time. I've got my drone, some coffee, and curiosity. Let's see if Highway 50 lives up to its name and what stories it has to tell us. Doing good. All right, so we need to fill up for this adventure because we actually had to prepare a little bit for this one. We're going on the loneliest road in America, which means that there's not gas stations. So I had to purchase a small gas container to fill up extra gas because we might run out. Let's start with that. So we have to fill that up just to have a little extra. The first little stop we wanna make is the Bonville Salt Flats near Salt Lake City, and then we're gonna head down to Highway 50. But before that, let's get into our sponsor. Before we get too much further in today's video, I wanna shout out today's sponsor, which is Anchor Solix. This battery is actually a lifesaver. As you guys have seen my solar setup and my battery in my camper, I actually need another battery to charge all my electronics and a battery that is able to be charged in different modes. So this one I use and I plug into my 12 volt in the truck while it's running. So this charges and it charges my drones, my cameras, my phone. And it's really nice to put beside my bed too to charge my phone and things so I don't have to have the electricity on in the camper. So all I do is just plug this into my 12 volt in my truck and then it charges while we're driving. And then I have battery. You can also charge this in other ways like you can plug it in, you can solar charge it. It's very versatile and it's very, very portable, which is what I like about it best. It has seven ports allowing you to charge multiple things. It also has a light up here. This thing is super powerful for how small it is. I have like five different types of cameras and I charge them all on here and it, it doesn't drain the battery very quickly. It even has a nice strap to just carry it and it's not too heavy. So use my link in the description for the Anchor Solix C300DC power bank where it's been very handy. Now let's get back to the road. The Bonville salt flats are very cool and they cover over 30,000 acres. Since 1914, this landscape has served as the racing grounds for generations of land speed racers from around the world. I just wish that we went on a warmer day because this was freezing. We are getting snow. We're in snow territory. It was so windy. I look like I've seen better days, because I have. I don't feel well. The last few days I've felt a bit unwell. It was so windy this morning, but we were just so tired that we just slept through it. And we're like, if the roof blows off, oh well. But, snow. We are professional dilly-dallers, so it takes us forever to get anywhere, really. And set up and tear down the camper also takes a long time. So it took us a while, but we finally are on route and we're starting our Highway 50 journey. But first we had to stop and sleep somewhere for the night. <sighs> we're not there yet, <laughs> but we're very close. We're at Eli, is that you say it? Ellie? We're at Ely, which is basically the beginning of Route 50. So we had to make a stop here because it got late and cold. We also had to get an RV park because if we didn't, we would die. Oh, by the way, I decided I'm not going to Oregon. We decided that. Oregon's gonna be too rainy and cold. We, we, we took too long to get over there. We changed route. That's why we're going on the loneliest highway in America, which I'm not as lonely as I was before. It is 24 degrees right now, but it's gonna get down tonight to 13 degrees. That's negative 10 in Celsius. It's gonna be the coldest night that I've ever slept outside. I know I've said this before, but this is not the plan. The plan was to get to a warm place. We've been going the coldest way possible. So that's why after this highway that we hopefully survive, we're gonna start getting to warmer areas, which we're gonna be doing, going down California into Mexico. It's getting hard because we can barely even like, like we're, we're crushed in a small space and it's really hard to go outside because it's freezing and windy. It was so windy last night. Pretty. bedtime now so I need to like kind of make more of a barrier I'm gonna put some cushion along the canvas because I sleep like right near the canvas and there's absolutely no insulation in this camper this is not a winter camper 
Even if it's not freezing cold, I still don't really get a great night's sleep on this bed because it kind of feels like a coffin in a way and I feel a little bit claustrophobic. That was a very, very, very cold night and I would like to never go through a cold night like that ever again. Oh, that sun. Route 50 is America's loneliest highway because there's absolutely nothing, but I don't think that's true. There's no gas stations, there's no stores. You go through all of Nevada with nothing. And I kind of want that right now. This place is a mess. <laughs> Before we actually get on Highway 50, I'd like to get a little bit of groceries, but I'm very grateful that there was an RV park because we had to run the heat several times last night. We can't run the heat consistently because it gets too hot and dry and loud. It's very, very loud. And the thermometer doesn't work, so we have to manually put it on and off. It was a long night and I'm starting this journey off pretty tired. Today's outfit of the day <laughs> to stay warm. Pure linen dress, pure 100% merino wool leggings, leather and yearling wool jacket. I'm vibing high. Let me go to the gym before we start driving again. Okay, so we're in the center of the small, tiny little town of Ely. Before we get onto Highway 50, we need to get some more propane because we used like all of it last night, trying to keep warm. And we also need to get, you know, some water, some groceries, just so we don't run out of anything. Okay, so went to the grocery store, got some water, which we've been using a lot of because we have to wash our dishes and stuff. And it's just uses a lot more water whenever you don't have the sink. Working. The last thing that we need to do is get some propane. By the way, welcome to Nevada. Okay, so we're finally ready to set out to Highway 50. Now we're doing the Nevada portion of this. Highway 50 stretches like 3,000 miles across the U.S. Nevada is specifically labeled the least highway in America, the, this portion of Highway 50. And it's called that because it's such a long stretch without anything there. But I, I bet that we can find some things there. We've been driving for a while now. I've seen very few cars, which is kind of nice. I've, I'm kind of enjoying this drive. We're gonna make our first stop in like half an hour at a town called Eureka. It was called that because back in the day, someone found a lot of silver there and he said, Eureka, that's what this town is based off of. Still a living town. A lot of the towns out here have died off, but this one still produces and gold and silver. We're gonna make a stop in there and I'm very interested to see what it's like before the sun sets. There's a random hot spring, possibly, and that's maybe where, where we will sleep tonight. Eureka was once dubbed the friendliest town on the loneliest road. At its peak, Eureka boasted 9,000 residents. So, 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 so cold right now. But this is like a very Western town. There's nothing really going on, nothing really open. There's two saloons open. That's about it. Foggy. Good morning. It's day 55 for out the loneliest road in America. I guess it's the loneliest, not the longest. I'm gonna pretend that this is really that long because it's not a long road. It's just a couple hundred miles, but I wouldn't even say lonely. I would say nice. It is very difficult to get away from people. Even now, we're, we came down this very long, very bumpy road last night at dark because it gets dark around like four or something here. And we got here, we're thinking, no, there's no possible way there's anyone else out here. There's two people out here. Anyways, let me show you the rig of this guy next to us because it's like my dream. Look at that. That's so cool. That's what I want. That's my next rig, guys. I like the quality today. It's, this whole thing will not become unfogged. <laughs> Show my full beauty. 
today we're going to find a little hot spring that's right next to here and see if it's uh, cool or not. All right, let's have some coffee. Another a reality check of living this type of lifestyle in this camper anyways, and also this happened in my Jeep as well, and it's common, is that underneath the bed from the condensation gets very wet. I don't know the scientific terms for things, but everything gets wet on the inside. So we're trying to air it out as best as possible before we go because we need to flatten this down. So we let this air out this morning. We have the fan going, the vent was going, and I'm gonna, I don't know, do my best here. If it's not addressed, uh, it creates mold. So I'm gonna try and find, um, I don't remember what the name is, but it is a thing you put underneath the bed, which creates air flow to be able to go throughout it. So I need to get one of those. It's kind of hard to find those things just out and about. I found the hot spring. It's actually in the shape of a heart. It's very small, but there's nobody else really out here. so. It's also very hot. I think I'm gonna get in my bathing suit and get in because I'm freezing, my ear hurts. It got down to 19 degrees last night. This might be really nice to get into though. So let's, let's hop in. Okay, oh, it's so cold. The wind, the wind is what makes it so cold. I'm just gonna acclimate to it because I know it's probably gonna be quite hot first. Oh yeah, I cannot do that. I am frozen to the bone, by the way. That's why this is really boiling to me. I'm so cold. That's too hot for me to actually go in. This area here apparently is kind of fenced off because there is a plant that only grows here and maybe one other place and it's endangered. It's a, some sort of paintbrush flower. So they had to fence it off and that grows out here. Random fact. Oh, that burns. It's been a struggle. It's been a struggle, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I think I can go in all the way now. Oh God, yes, that feels so good. Hot spring is amazing. Like, it's so nice. We're gonna like get down to California soon. Other influencers and stuff might not show you about the road. I don't actually know. I haven't, I don't really watch YouTubers, but it's, it's not like there are small towns and stuff. There are places to get gas. Like obviously if you come out here with a half a tank of gas, yeah, you're going to run out. But if you come out here with like a full tank, you can really manage it. It's nice. It's a nice highway. It, it just feels like peaceful and not lonely at all. This is probably the best way to travel through Nevada because ne Nevada is a lot of barren land. Apparently for this hot spring, you're supposed to pull the plug. <clears throat> it's really stuck in there. I don't understand this. Okay, I gotta figure it out. And we drained it. It's cute how it's a little heart. Unlimited hot water, very cool. to show you guys the only rest stop that we've encountered so far on this highway, and it's not much. Yes, some bins and one picnic table. This road has actually been a breath of fresh air, to be honest, and I don't find it lonely at all. I find it so peaceful and nice. I'm a bit antisocial, but I can't help but feel at rest here without too many people around. This road takes us up 7,500 feet elevation. That's high. All the way up into the snowy mountain. And that's where we're headed right there, the tiny town of Austin. Just... Oh no, he did not. <laughs> that was so close. The 
population is 100 and something. So it's very, very small for the people who actually live here. Everything is closed. So it's very interesting to me what the people who actually live here do. By the mid-1860s, Austin was a thriving silver hub with over 10,000 residents. Today, Austin has fewer than 200 residents. Driving and driving, we're still on our way very close to Middlegate, but we had to make one stop in first. We had to add some shoes to this shoe tree randomly out here. Shoes just everywhere. I wonder why. <laughs> Try again. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, we have lost the shoes, so we give up, but um, we tried. Oh. <laughs> Time to move on to Middlegate. We finally made it to Middlegate, and there's basically just this bar here. That's all that there, that there is here in Middlegate. But it's kind of in the middle, or maybe more than the middle, of this journey. If you're ever coming through Highway 15, I'd highly recommend coming to this little bar right here. It's very nice, very um, friendly. They make good fries, and I don't eat burgers, but my friend here had a burger, and he said they're pretty good. So anyways, we're moving on before it gets dark. We need to find somewhere to camp tonight. Not a bad camp spot. It's cold. Again, it's very cold because the wind is really, really cold. So what's going on right now is that we came up to the very top of this um, kind of mountain and it made it a lot colder and a lot windier. So we're just on this very back road and I just decided, wow, I wanted to ride in the back of this to see what it felt like back here because obviously you can't do that on the actual roads. We just decided that if it's bad right now, which it's only like five o'clock, it's gonna get real bad tonight. This is camping up at that place just is not going to work. So we had to kind of collapse everything to back down and we're gonna drive all the way back down the mountain or whatever. I've never really expected Nevada to be so mountainous. I just expected this road to just be complete, like just driving through a boring desert, but it's anything but that. Hopefully tonight after we get down the hill some, it won't be windy and it'll be a decent temperature to sleep in. Good morning. The sun is out. This is probably the warmest day we've had for, I don't know, like the past month it feels like. It actually was not freezing last night. We're moving on now to the sand dunes along Route 50. Let's go check those out. Highway 50 still, and there's just massive random sand dune. Um, like it's gonna climb on it. And also there's a whole salt flat just over on the other side. You get everything on Highway 50. Sand Mountain is a 20 mile sand dune, which a lot of ATVers ride on, which to be honest, I cannot stand ATVs. <laughs> they ruin so much beauty. It was formed actually by a lake 9,000 years ago that dried After up. the big dune, then there's like a mini salt flat. It's smaller than the ones near Salt Lake City and not as cool, but like, it's just random. It looks like snow, but it's salt. Okay, we're gonna go and try and find some coffee today. I think, I think we're gonna stop in a town called Fallon, which is pretty much back into civilization. Stopped in this coffee shop in Fallon. We're headed now to Lake Tahoe, which comes around full circle because just a year ago I was there. So it'd be nice to go there in off season and see it. But my goal for going to Tahoe is to get a new sweater because I've been wearing the same one for the past what, year and a half now and it needs to be replaced. So we need to do that. And then I feel like after Tahoe, we're gonna start going down the coast of California and finally, hopefully, get to Mexico. We also need to fix our water pump, but we've put that off because it's been freezing every night and we don't want it to freeze. And we did get a new water pump though. So stay tuned for the uh, installation of that. This is 
is the town where the Top Gun film is based in Fallon, and the Academy is just over there for the actual Top Gun. I don't know much about that stuff, but that's a little fact of Fallon. Okay, before we carry on, we need to top up some oils. In the, we've gone like over 3,000 miles. It needs a little power steering fluid. Zero W20. So I'm out here in front of like the first wild horses that I've seen up close and my heart is just very full. I used to, uh, growing up as a teenager, be so obsessed with horses and I really miss them. But seeing like the wild horses out here in Nevada, this is a cool experience for sure. Wow, that's made me very happy. Bye bye. Well done. I'm going to end our Highway 50 adventure after three days out on it, landing in the beautiful Lake Tahoe. Bye. Oh, you don't even know. I just want to cry. My end thoughts on this majestic road is that it's anything but lonely. It's the most beautiful stretch of highway I've been on, and I think it should be named the most scenic, peaceful highway in the USA. I hope you enjoyed the journey just as much as I did. Stay tuned for what comes next, and stay extraterrestrial.